Hello and welcome to the Siamese Tracking of Cell Behavior Patterns post presentation for the Medical Imaging with Deep Learning 2020 conference. I will introduce the motivation of our project, I will introduce the problem and our solution and go over our results. Now our main goal is to identify the cells in frames uh, and despite that this picture shows that sometimes it is easy, it is not always the case and sometimes we miss a lot of information and it is hard to delineate cell boundaries. Also, we have lots of fluid movements and when cells collide, uh, it is not always easy to identify the individual cells as the picture to the right indicates where it's hard to say whether those are two cells or a bundle of cells together. Also, we need to deal with different cell morphologies uh, because some cells do not retain the same shape. Hence, the goal of our project is to correctly identify cells in frames, track them through time, and identify cell mitosis, collision, and apoptosis, which I'll explain later. Now, we deal with the trade-off in segmentation algorithms being over-segmenting and under-segmenting cells. So, in the picture in the middle, you can see uh, the two cells at the top part, they are incorrectly segmented as one, but when we try to correct this mis mistake, we introduce more mistakes as the picture to the right indicates. Moreover, a lot of approaches are over-parameterized to one uh, cell type. Uh, so uh, an, an approach that is good at finding circular cells is not good at uh, ellipsoid cells and vice versa. Also, many approaches ignore biological cell behavior such as collision and mitosis, and that can lead to incorrect or results or uh, loosely defined uh, cell boundaries. And that is what we're trying to solve. So our approach is a three-step method where we use an initial segmentation to model uh, collisional and mitotic events. We apply Siamese matching to predict an incorrectly segmented cell to where it should be, the correct location in the previous or next frame. And then we resegment with watershed deconvolution. What that looks like, um, we use collision, which we define as two cells colliding and mitosis as one cell dividing into two, but these two events are considered the same but in opposite temporal dimension. And these uh, events help us identify an incorrectly segmented cells if we see that two cells are incorrectly segmented S1 in the next or previous frame. And the core essence of our algorithm is applying Siamese matching to the one cell that is segmented incorrectly to predict the correct location in the previous or next frame and correctly identify the two cells that combined into one. And using uh, those two cells, we use their centroids uh, to apply the watershed deconvolution to correct the mistake. Now, for our results, um, uh, you can see that our approach uh, outperf outperforms state-of-the-art uh, approaches in the ESB cell tracking challenge in two datasets and comes seconds uh, in the third. It is important, however, to note that the difference between the, our approach and the first entry are quite small. Hence, it is very important to mention that our algorithm works well with datasets that have a lot of uh, mitotic and collisional events where our approach is is better at handling. So in the PSC dataset, it has a lot of smaller cells that have a lot of erratic movements, and there's a larger increase in performance using our resegmentation approach over uh, on top of uh, state-of-the-art initial segmentation. But in the case of the DIC dataset, it contains large cells that don't move a lot. So it, um, a state-of-the-art approach has nothing to gain but our, our resegmentation approach. But what we introduce is an enhancement over the initial segmentation by applying a resegmentation and correcting initial predictions no matter what the initial segmentation algorithm war, uh, was. We also have robustness, robustness to morphological variations in biological cell behavior due to us modeling cell, cell mitosis and collisional events. And we generalize well across different datasets because our approach does not depend on any dataset specific parameters. So in summary, we've seen how our approach uh, um, avoids the need for a trade-off uh, or for over-parameterized approach and can actually model biological behavior. And uh, by applying some tracking and uh, watershed deconvolution for risk imitation, we can correct incorrectly segmented cells. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.